Right, so now we need to look at exchange rate impacts. We've done the hard work, we understand what an exchange rate can appreciate, what an exchange rate can depreciate. What impact does it have if an exchange rate gets stronger or if our currency gets weaker? We need to understand the effect on the macroeconomy. You've done the hard work, so why worry? Take it easy, man. Learn these acronyms. Life becomes very simple when we do. So when a currency gets stronger, just think, spiced. You shouldn't have to think anymore. You've done the hard work. Take a chill pill. Learn these, def learn these acronyms. Don't even question it. Life becomes easier when you learn it. When a weak currency, when you're working with a weak currency, just learn this acronym and you'll be absolutely fine. Basically, in macroeconomics, whenever an exchange rate changes, gets stronger, gets weaker, we're looking at the trade performance of the economies very specifically. So let's take a strong currency. We learn spiced. Okay? That tells us exactly what's going to happen now. With a strong pound or with a strong currency, imports become cheaper, exports become dearer. Dearer just means more expensive. That's why spiced is brilliant. It tells us all of that. So then we can isolate the effects on imports and exports. So imports, therefore, they've become cheaper. So the demand for imports is going to increase, isn't it? Therefore, the expenditure on imports, the amount of money we spend on imports, is going to increase as well. They're now cheaper. At the same time, exports have become dearer, they've become more expensive. So demand for exports is going to fall. And the revenue brought in by exports is going to fall because we're not selling as many. So then we can look at, okay, fine, we know imports and exports. Where does that feature? It features in the aggregate demand equation as X minus M. Export revenue minus uh, import expenditure. So if our import expenditure is going up, that's increasing. And our export revenue is going down, that's decreasing. Overall, the value of this bracket is going to fall, which means that aggregate demand is going to fall because that is a part of the aggregate demand equation. So on a diagram, when there is a strong exchange rate, aggregate demand is going to decrease from 81 to 82. It's going to shift to the left, which causes a reduction in growth and a reduction in demand pull, inflationary pressure. And as growth decreases from Y1 to Y2, there is going to be an increase in unemployment. Um, and like I said, there's going to be some benefit from a reduction in demand pull, inflationary pressure. So that's how you analyze that. The opposite happens for a weak currency. So if a currency depreciates, gets weaker, falls in value, then we go to WIDEC, which is the opposite of SPICE. So learn these two. WIDEC, W is for weak currency, or weak pound, makes imports dear, expensive, and exports cheap. So, imports now become expensive. Whereas here, imports were cheap. So if imports are now expensive, the demand for imports is going to decrease, and the money we spend on imports is going to decrease. Whereas for exports, well, exports now become cheaper. Whereas with a strong exchange rate, exports became more expensive. So now, if exports are cheaper with a weak currency, demand for exports is going to increase. The revenue brought in from export sales is likely to increase because we can sell more as a benefit of this lower price. So what's the link now? Well, again, we go to X minus M. We know X minus M is a big feature of the aggregate demand equation. Well, if the revenue brought in from exports is increasing and the money we spend on imports is decreasing, overall, this bracket is going to increase. Therefore, aggregate demand is likely to increase. So on the diagram, you shift aggregate demand to the right from 81 to 82, and that increases growth from Y1 to Y2, but there is a consequence of demand pull inflation from P1 to P2, and because of growth, there's going to be a reduction in unemployment too. So a weak currency, there are big benefits to the macroeconomy from increased growth and decreased unemployment, but there are some negatives from increase in inflation. Whereas with strong currency, the opposite happens. Reduction in growth and increase in unemployment, but a fall in demand pull inflationary pressure. So that's all well and good. There is also a dual effect going on here. I'm not going to draw this, but it's important for you to understand this. When we look at a weak currency, and in fact a strong currency too, there is another impact going on, and that's the link to imports. Remember, remember, 
What was one of the causes of cost push inflation pressure? Cost push inflation was caused by any change in the costs of production for firms in the macroeconomy. If the cost of production rises, there is going to be cost push inflation. Short run aggregate supply is going to shift to the left. If there is a fall in cost of production, short run aggregate supply is going to shift to the right. There is going to be a fall in cost push inflation. So here, with a weak currency, imports have become more expensive. Therefore, for firms who import raw materials to produce, their costs of production are going to increase. And they're going to pass on those higher costs via higher prices. So a weak currency, as well as actually increasing demand pull inflation, can also increase cost push inflation too. Very, very important due effect that all students forget. Whereas for a strong currency, you're going to see a reduction in demand pull inflation because AD shifts to the left, but also you're going to see a reduction in cost push inflation because now imports have become cheaper. So that reduces the cost of production for firms, which means short run aggregate supply shifts to the right, reducing cost push inflation pressure. So make sure you know that yes, there is a big aggregate demand side link here to both, but there is also an aggregate supply link to both. Right? And one final thing we need to do is to evaluate. So the main link is to aggregate demand. Fine. But whether that happens or not, whether these things happen or not, aggregate demand shifts left or shifts right, depends on lots of factors. So we need to know what these evaluation points are as well. So whenever we're evaluating what happens as a result of an exchange rate change, you can always bring in some of these depends on points. So the end effect of inflation on growth and unemployment from an exchange rate change depends on one, the PED for exports and imports. Take spiced, a strong exchange rate. We've assumed that with spiced, imports become cheaper, exports become more expensive, therefore aggregate demand is likely to shift to the left because it's harder for us to export and we import more. Yeah, but what if the PD for imports and exports is really price inelastic? Then maybe right, demand for import, demand for exports may decrease, but only by a tiny bit. And maybe demand for imports may increase, but only by a tiny bit. So therefore, maybe net exports won't decrease by very much. Therefore, maybe aggregate demand won't decrease by very much. Right? So that's what you can say. It depends on the PD for imports and exports. We're trying to evaluate how much aggregate demand changes. It also depends on the size of the appreciation or depreciation. Obviously, a very big depreciation, a weak currency, a very much uh, a large change in the value of the currency, a big weakening of the currency, is going to have a much larger impact on the demand for exports and imports. Now, because exports become a lot cheaper, the demand for exports is likely to rise a lot. For imports, because they become a lot more expensive, the demand for them is going to fall a lot. So the bigger the change in the exchange rate, the greater the end result is likely to be. Okay, so you just explain how that's going to lead to an increase in demand for exports and a reduction in the demand for imports to a weak currency, etc. So the size of the appreciation, the size of the depreciation is also very important. It also depends on whether there are Restrictions on trade. That's something else to consider as well. If there are restrictions on trade, then we can't just assume that if our currency gets weaker, we can export more. What if foreign countries are actually restricting our exports? Maybe there are tariffs on our goods. Maybe there are uh, our quotas set on our goods. Whatever. There might be some restrictions on trade which kind of negate some of the impacts we've just said. We can also bring in the offset argument here. What if the effect on uh, aggregate demand is offset by another feature, another factor that might decrease aggregate demand or increase aggregate demand? So if we take a weak currency, we've said aggregate demand is going to shift to the right. But what if there is another policy out there in the economy, something else in the economy, which is going to offset this impact? We don't know about that, so it might be offset. And similarly, this one, the effect on um, uh, exchange rates depends very heavily on incomes abroad. And that's especially true for a weak currency. Weak currency, with ec, imports more expensive, exports cheap. We are assuming that we can just sell more exports. Demand for exports picks up, we can sell more. 
but depends on incomes abroad. What if there's been a recession abroad in our major trading partners? Then maybe exports won't increase as much as we think. So incomes abroad are just as important when we're trying to determine the effect on the macroeconomy for exchange rate changes. I hope that makes sense now. You've got aggregate demand, which is a big, big feature here. The effect on trade, but you've also got the aggregate supply, the costs of imported raw materials, import and inflation, something else to consider uh, as well. Thanks very much. See you next time.